Assalamu alaikum, friends. Now that Ramadan is over, what are you feeling? Do you feel so happy? Thank you, Allah, for giving me such a wonderful Ramadan. I got to see my family and friends and read and listen to the Quran. Or do you feel so tired because you stayed up way past your bedtime during Ramadan? Do you feel confident? You worked hard to be a good, strong Muslim during Ramadan, and I know you're going to keep trying once it's over. Or do you feel kind because you were able to give some of your toys to other kids or put money in the sadaqa box at the masjid? Do you feel sick because you ate too many sweets during iftar time? Or do you feel sad because Ramadan is over? Ramadan was so special. Or do you feel excited about celebrating Eid? It's okay to feel all these things. In the Quran, Allah says, after we fast all the days of Ramadan, we should feel so thankful to Allah for making us good Muslims and say how great Allah is. How do we say Allah is great? We say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Can you say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That means Allah is the greatest. So no matter how amazing anyone on this earth is, Allah is always better. Allah is the biggest, he's the strongest, he's the smartest, the most rich, the most kind, and the most loving. He has 99 names that tell us how amazing he is. So when Ramadan is done, and we feel so much closer to Allah, we say, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Allah, for this amazing Ramadan and making us good, strong Muslims. And on Eid Day, we say, we say how great Allah is by doing takbir. So on Eid, we're all supposed to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Can you say it with me? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha Illa la Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allah is the greatest Allah is the greatest There is no God but Allah That's what that means And that's how we start the celebration of Eid and the end of Ramadan Hmm what are other things we can do to prepare for Eid? We give zakat and filter. Remember, what are the five things we need to do to be good Muslims? We believe in our hearts and we say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. We pray five times a day we fast from all time, and we give zakat to those who have less than us, and we go to Hajj. So, before Eid, we need to do the fourth pillar of Islam. We need to make sure we feed the poor by giving zakat al fitr. And we do this so that everyone has food to eat on Eid day. What are things we can do in our homes to prepare for Eid? We can clean and decorate them for Eid. And we can prepare our Eid clothes before Eid so that we're ready on the day of to go to Salat al-Eid. 
Muslims try to wear new clothes if they can on Eid day. Some of us wear traditional clothing. I'm gonna wear my Palestinian thobe on Eid. But you can wear anything clean on Eid day. What do you do on Eid day? First, we tell our loved ones, Eid Mubarak, Happy Eid. Happy Eid, Mom and Baba. Happy Eid, Grandma and Grandpa. And then we have to make sure we shower and we're clean before we put on our new clothes. When you get to the Eid prayer, you're going to see all your loved ones and family and friends. Everyone comes together to say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. They do this by saying the takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Then khutbah al Eid starts. That means we have to sit very quietly during the khutbah because we have to listen to the Imam. Shh. When the Imam is done giving his important talk, then we pray two rak'ahs together. That's a short salah. Do you know what's special about Salat al Eid? About the Eid prayer? It has to do with saying Allahu Akbar. We say Allahu Akbar seven times before we actually start praying. So, after the khutbah, the Imam will say Allahu Akbar seven times before we start reading Surah Al Fatha. We do that because we're supposed to say how great Allah is during Eid. After that, that's it. We get to celebrate. Yay! We get to see our family and friends and exchange gifts. What do we say when someone gives us a gift? Thank you. Thank you. Finally, we can do something that we haven't been able to do all Ramadan. Do you know what that is? We can eat. Yay! What are you going to eat on the first day of Eid? On Eid day, my family always likes to go eat pancakes. But remember, we worked really hard in Ramadan to be on our best behavior. So now that it's over, we have to try and keep it up and stay good while we celebrate Eid. Do you know how many days we celebrate Eid? We celebrate Eid for three days. Wow, that's a lot. Three days filled with visiting family and friends, getting gifts, and having fun. And because we have two Eids in the year, that's so many days of celebrating in the year. So we celebrate Eid al-Fitr after Ramadan. And then two months later, we celebrate Eid al-Adha. Can you say, Eid al-Adha? Eid al-Adha. But before I tell you about Eid al-Adha, let's do a story time about our Prophet Ibrahim, the father of all the prophets. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a boy named Ibrahim. Ibrahim was born in a land where people prayed to the sun, moon, stars, and statues. Ibrahim's father was a statue maker. So one day, Ibrahim went to his father and asked him, Why do you worship these statues when they can't do anything? His father didn't know what to tell him, so he said, This is what my father did. But that didn't make sense to Ibrahim. So when the night came and Ibrahim saw the beautiful stars, he said, This is my Lord. But when the stars disappeared, he, Ibrahim said, I don't like things that disappear. It can't be my Lord. So when he saw the moon come out, he said, This is my Lord. But then, can you guess what happened? The moon also disappeared. So Ibrahim said, This can't be my Lord. But when he saw the sun shining, he said, This has to be my Lord. It is the greatest. But guess what happened to the sun? It also disappeared. And Ibrahim then knew that he couldn't worship the stars, the moon, or the sun. He could only worship 
the one true God, Allah. So he told the people that he didn't believe in what they believed. Everyone was so mad at Ibrahim. How could he not believe in the same thing? So they said mean things to him. But Ibrahim was very brave. And he believed in his heart that there was only one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he couldn't worship any of the other things. He was very brave and stood up to the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him from all the mean people. One day, when Ibrahim alayhi salam was older, and he was married to his wife Hajar, he left the city of the mean people and traveled to new cities to teach people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Prophet Ibrahim was getting very old and he really wanted a son so that his son could also teach people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after he waited a very long time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a son named Ismail. Allah asked Ibrahim alayhi salam one day to take Hajar and his son Ismail to Mecca, a desert city, and leave them there, but not say anything to them. When they reached Mecca, he did what Allah asked them and he left them under a tree with just a few dates and water for just a few days, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to. Hajar knew that Ibrahim salam was doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him. But soon, the water and dates ran out and she needed to feed her baby. So she started running between the mountains of Safa and Marwa looking for food and water. She then heard a voice telling her not to worry. And then suddenly, there was water flowing from the ground. She was so happy. She started to drink the water and collect it and feed her baby. This water is called Zamzam and it still exists today. This miracle still exists for us to drink. Zamzam water is so special. It's not like any other water. It keeps you full and not thirsty for a very long time. And this water is so special because it was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of the desert. Because there was finally water in the desert, people soon started come and join Hajar and Ismail, and Prophet Ibrahim came back. While Ismail was growing up, Prophet Ibrahim had a dream to sacrifice his son. Ibrahim was so sad. How could he sacrifice his son? that he wanted for so long, but he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to do this. And Allah knew how special Ismail was to him. But Shaitan the bad guy knew how much Ibrahim wanted a son, so he tried to stop Ibrahim from obeying Allah. He would whisper things in his ears like, you finally got your son, how can you give him up? And do you know what Ibrahim did? Every time Shaitan would whisper things in his ear, Ibrahim would pick up a stone and he would throw it at Shaitan and say, Allahu Akbar. He was so angry at Shaitan. He threw so many stones at Shaitan and he would yell, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than you, Shaitan. Allah is greater than what I want. And when he finally defeated Shaitan, he went to his son Ismail and told him about his dream. And Ismail was very brave and wanted his father to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Ibrahim was about to sacrifice his son, Allah subhanahu wa stopped him and replaced Ismail with a lamb. Ismail was okay. Allah knew that Ibrahim alayhi salam loved Allah and that he would do anything for him. So then our Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail returned to Mecca together happily. When Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail returned to Mecca, they built the Kaaba. When we pray, we pray in the direction of the Kaaba. The Kaaba is the Masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they built this so that people can continue worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever. And so many years later, till today, people still go to Mecca to go perform Hajj and visit the Kaaba. So every year, 
people from all over the world who speak different languages and look different go to Mecca and remember the story of Prophet Ibrahim and his wife Hajar. They run between the mountains of Safa and Marwa. They drink Zamzam water and they walk around the Kaaba that Ibrahim السلام, built. This is called Hajj. Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam. Muslims only need to go to Hajj one time in their life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of their bad deeds. Not everyone goes to Hajj every year. So if you don't go to Hajj, you celebrate Eid with your family at home. You go to Salat al-Eid, you say Allahu Akbar just like Prophet Ibrahim did, and you sacrifice an animal and feed it to your friends and family and poor people. Let's see how Hassan and Anissa celebrate Eid in their book, Hassan and Anissa Celebrate Eid by Yasmin Rahim. Eid al-Fitr has started. The new moon has been seen, and the special month of Ramadan is over. Tomorrow, Mommy and Daddy, Hassan and Anissa are having a party to celebrate Eid. Everybody is helping to decorate the house. Hassan is looking for paper chains and Daddy hangs a banner. Mummy is blowing up balloons and Anissa is trying to help. My cheeks hurt, says Anissa, all puffed out. Mummy is cooking food. For tomorrow, she is making salad, roast chicken and cake. Anissa, can you help me, asks Mummy. Okay, says Anissa, I'll try all the food for you. Hassan is clearing the table and Daddy is hoovering the carpet. Soon the house is clean and a feast for all their family and friends is ready. Bedtime! We've got a busy day tomorrow, says Mummy. Hassan and Anissa are excited. They run upstairs and get ready for bed. Mummy and Daddy have a few more jobs to do. Daddy wraps up Hassan and Anissa's Eid presents. They're a surprise. Afterwards, he must pay Zakat al-Fitr. It is the money that helps the poor and needy. It is the morning of Eid, and everybody is in a hurry. They s the special Eid prayer starts soon. We don't want to be late, says Daddy. Hassan has just showered. I'm coming, Daddy, wait for me, he says. Anissa, stop skipping and put your dress on, calls Mommy. When everybody is dressed and ready to go, they eat a date. Hassan and Anissa look smart in their Eid clothes. They're on their way to read prayer. Where are we going to park, says Hassan. That is where we will pray, says Mummy. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would perform Eid prayer outside. It is nice to follow his example. Anissa can hear lots of people up ahead. What are they saying, says Anissa, asks Anissa. They're saying the Eid takbir out loud before prayer starts, says Daddy. Let's go and join them. The Eid prayer has finished, and everyone is sitting quietly. Only the Imam is speaking. Allah likes it when we give money and food to poor and needy people. They should enjoy Eid too. We can also share food with friends, family, and neighbors. Hassan listens carefully to the Imam. Eid Mubarak, Mommy says to Anissa after the khutbah. Eid Mubarak, Anissa replies with a big smile. Let's find Daddy and Hassan. I want to say Eid Mubarak to them. They walk across the park. It's bustling with people celebrating Eid. Mummy spots Hassan and waves. Daddy says goodbye to his friend. The party will start soon and they need to get home. The doorbell rings. Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak, says Daddy and Mummy, greeting their guests. Hassan and Anissa are in the living room. They're busy unwrapping their presents. A pretty doll, 
I love it, says Anissa. Wow, my favorite game, says Hassan. Soon the feast will be served. Everybody is in the garden waiting. Hassan is playing football and Daddy cooks food on the barbecue. Anissa's having fun skipping. She jumps faster and faster while Mommy talks to her friends. It's getting late. All the guests say assalamu alaikum and go home. Mummy starts to tidy up. There is plenty of raid food left. Let's share it with our neighbors, Hassan says. That's a brilliant idea, replies Mummy. Daddy knocks on Tom and Gemma's door. Hello, happy Eid. We have some food for you, says Daddy. This looks tasty. Thank you, says Tom. Hassan and Anissa have had a wonderful time. They don't want it to ever end. The end. Every family has their own traditions during Eid. Some families eat a lot of food and visit a lot of people. And some families just like to go to the Salat and take a Eid nap and give gifts at home. No tradition is the wrong tradition as long as we're happy, alhamdulillah. Eid Mubarak from Sister Gigi to all my friends and family. I'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum.